Welcome back to our Facts on DAX series where we're talking about everything DAX. If you missed our first video, be sure to check it out to get all the basic deets on DAX. Can we, can we hashtag that? Deets on DAX. No? Okay, sorry. Anywho, now that we get DAX and how varied they can be, the next important questions to consider are... What DAC do I need? How do I set it up? Great questions, guys. I really love the commitment to the script. The first thing you'll need to consider that we'll talk about is your source. What are you planning to play music from is also going to be a big factor in what type of DAC you're going to need and how much you could or rather should spend. Part one, source device. So what's your source? A computer, phone, tablet? Are you looking for a standalone DAC with streaming capability? There are a ton of options here, so let's take a look at some. If you're planning on using your phone, then you have the option of playing music locally that's stored on your device or streaming apps. There are a ton of streaming services out there and more and more options for high resolution music. You'll get the most from your phone by connecting a dongle DAC or a USB-C DAC via USB-C or Lightning, whatever connection your phone has. Dongle DACs are simple, pretty much just plug and play and you're good to go. The phone should automatically detect the DAC when you plug it in and set it as the main audio output. The same goes for tablet or even a laptop. What if you want to set up a DAC with your computer? You have a few more options in this department based on what kind of connection you want to use. Since most will interface via USB-C, you can use a dongle DAC if you want something small, a USB DAC if you want more features, or a desktop DAC for the full Monty. Now, there are standalone DAC cards for PC via PCI connection or high-end audio cards which basically do the same thing and provide various output options for connections to speakers or whatever. That being said, in most cases, the DAC will interface with your computer via the USB connection. The same options apply on computer. You can either listen to music from your local library or stream from installed apps from the PC. You're using your computer as the source for your music to the DAC in this case, so that's where the DAC will be doing the conversion from. Take the Chord Mojo 2 for example. It can interface via USB. It's also primarily used as a portable DAC amp, but you can also plug it into your laptop or computer and it makes for a great desktop DAC that doesn't take up a lot of space as well. Depending on if you have a Windows PC or Mac, you might require some additional configuration and driver installation steps to get it set up to recognize your DAC and set it as your main audio out. But that's a conversation for another day. We'll put a link in the description below on how to set up and configure your DAC on your computer. Say you have some physical media like a CD, then Cayenne CD Transport, the mini CD Mark II, is a really cool option. It has a built-in high-end DAC chipset and also does upsampling. So if your source is your huge collection of compact discs, then don't worry, they're not obsolete. People still make CD players. They're just a lot better now. If you're a fan of Rune, then you could use your computer as a core with your music library installed locally, or you could add the Rune Nucleus as a dedicated core. Why would you use the Nucleus? Well, you always have to log in when you're using your computer, shut down, start up, log in, etc. The Nucleus stays on all the time, and secondly, it's a designated device to store, process, and play back your music. Computers can be noisy, slower, draw more power, and they don't sound as good. Using Rune and Rune Ready devices can be a little more involved with setup, so let us know in the comments if you want to learn more about Rune and what it can do for your music. Network connected DACs are great options since they can connect to a Rune core, a computer, any source really, and they don't have to be physically connected to that device. You can even use your laptop, iPad, phone, whatever as a remote control in some cases. If you really want to up your game and get the best of the best, you can use something like an Arender streamer. Arender makes some of the best all-in-one units that do everything, high-end DACs, streamers, amplifier, and they even have their own proprietary software for streaming music, cataloging, and playback. You really get some high-end functionality and features when you go down the network DAC rabbit hole, but beware, they can also get pretty pricey. 
Now, when it comes to connections and how to set up your DAC, I'll just say a quick note here about the connection hierarchy. There are some common DAC connection ports and the order in which you should use them for the best audio quality, starting at the best and going down. I squared S, AES, XLR, SPDIF, either RCA or TOSLINK, and finally USB. Again, this is the order which we'd recommend prioritizing the connection options if you're looking for the absolute best sound quality out of your system. I won't get into specifics here, but know that DACs will come in various I.O. configurations, so just something to keep in mind. How does the DAC fit into your signal chain? Like, where does it go or how do you plug it in? It might sound like an easy question, but for those who don't know, you don't know. And it's pretty important to figure out so you do it right. Typically, it looks like this. You have your source, which is where your music is located. You need something to then convert the data to an analog signal so that you can hear it. This is where the DAC comes in. Next, you'll need an amplifier to amplify that signal to an audible level. And then finally, your output device, either a speaker or headphones. When it comes to plug and play devices like the dongle DAC and say a phone, you just plug in the DAC via the USB type connection to your charging port of your phone and it should automatically recognize and assign it as the audio output. Most dongle DACs can do an average of 2V RMS, so the amplifier section is covered here. And all that's left is the connection to your headphones. USB DACs work in pretty much the same way where you connect them to the source, they already have a built-in amplification, and all you need to do is connect your speakers or headphones. Desktop DACs can be a little more confusing because most times they are either standalone units or packaged with a streamer or a headphone amp or even come in all-in-one designs. Either way, just know that you need to connect the DAC to the source, then to amplification, and finally, your audio output device. The next thing we think you should consider is your listening style, ergonomics, or how you listen to music in your daily life. What kind of DAC you need is going to vary person to person. I like to divide it up into three categories. One, dongle DACs. For those who don't want to spend a lot of money, but want something that they can simply plug into their phone or laptop and get some quality gains on their sound. If you fall into this category, then you're going to want something resembling a dongle DAC a small no frills DAC that you can pop into your phone, plug into your headphones, and you're good to go. Two, USB DACs. The next person might wanna spend a decent amount of money on a DAC with more features, more power, and the ability to use it on the go, or even as a small desktop DAC if space is a consideration. These individuals will likely go for a USB DAC, which I like to designate as different from dongle DACs because whereas dongle DACs connect via USB, these larger DACs typically have their own internal battery. Dongle DACs are powered passively by the source device. And three, desktop DACs. Lastly, there are those who are going to want big, beefy standalone or desktop units with even more power, more features, and of course, a larger footprint. These are going to be more expensive, but give you the best in conversion and sound quality. These are the desktop DAC people. You're not toting these puppies around with you. Put them up on the shelf or wherever you put your music gear and let them work their magic. This is for the audiophile or music lover that wants the best of the best. Ergonomics and price points are going to be important things to consider when figuring out what the best DAC for you is going to be. Now that's a lot of information, but just know that there are options and a multitude of ways to configure your DAC with whatever music listening setup you have. That being said, stay tuned for our next three videos where we'll specifically address some of our DAC recommendations for our three groups, dongle DACs, USB DACs, and desktop DACs. Stay tuned, you'll wanna check out some of these products for basically every price point out there. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. All the best audio gear right here at Moon Audio. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.